It's awesome. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Uh, this is a day that I've been looking forward to uh, because we're talking again about solid state amplifiers. And we've had some epiphanies, some yeah. moments. Yeah, certainly a reason to maybe revisit. So as as regular viewers all know, Dan and I are haven't traditionally been big fans of solid state transistor mm. amplifiers for a number of reasons. One is I think our experience of those amps tends to be in a lot of very ordinary versions of them down the years. Sure. So cheap stuff down the years, which, you know, some people love it. We don't love it. It's generally been associated with budget, hasn't it? Budget gear. Yeah. yeah. And don't, and don't and get me that, wrong. That's, I, that, that, that's bad, but you know. I went through a stage where I had a sessionette. I had, I've, I've tried this. I've definitely tried it down the years and just kind of veered towards the classic valve amp end of things. And whenever we put that opinion across, a lot of people will say, oh, are you just tube snobs or you're just biased or whatever. Um, the tube snobs, I don't know. I don't know if a preference is snobbery as such, mm. but biased, yes, because... You know, you, you use something for many, many years and you, you become used to it and you really like it. Mm -hmm. But a few things have happened over the last couple of years that have encouraged definitely me and I think you as well. Just to, just to go, well, OK, let's let's re-engage with this a bit and see yep. what we can learn. Um, the first one was, what was it? It was actually very recently the experience with the jc40 the Roland jc40 yeah and we were both like Just, wow well amazing yeah actually the issue that i've always had the solid state amplifiers is they say you know this solid state amplifier is 150 watts and then you'd plug it in and go and it, it would just cave in so quickly and then you'd compare that to a 10 watt valve amplifier and the valve amp tended to be so much louder mm. but then with the j40 it was blisteringly loud yeah. so jc40 jc40 yeah. had so much headroom so that's i feel has been sorted out yeah you know by a lot of these guys um the interaction with pedals so yeah. you get used to the way a classic overdrive interacts with a classic valve amp and you get used to that so it, it, while it may not be better or worse in a solid state amp it's going to be different and yeah. then the feel is different and it kind of puts you off a bit and equally there are people who will play solid state amps who really love the way that works and mm -hmm. are put off so really it's a familiarity thing and a, and a tone preference thing so that was one and um, we played J the jc40 we also when we did the first transistor show which was some time ago now um, a lot of people said you really 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 need to check out quilter amps mm -hmm. because lots of people said really good things about quilter blah 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 so we have finally got a quilter product which we'll get to today and Qu not to forget uh, our uh, dear friend Thomas Blug, who we've been talking to uh, over the years, and uh, so we have the the Blug amplifier. And he also popped in. He did, he did. Um, which we'll show you a bit of that in a minute. And then the final thing was we went to Japan with Boss and Roland, and we played the Next Tone, the new Next Tone amp. And I came away from that going, actually, do you know what? That's pretty good. I played yeah. a couple of katanas. Um, over the last couple of years and thought, hmm, that's, it's a, it's a move forward. Yeah. And I think this is, feels like a move forward again. Mm. So 
Oh, it's really tough, isn't it? Because it's a very emotive subject. Mm. Try not to be too biased about it, but there are differences and there are differences in the feel. What we hope is that we can... What would be awesome is if we could just move the debate along a little bit. Mm. So instead of this kind of intractable, polarised... Valves is good, tubes is best, solid state is you know all that stuff yeah there's there's kind of a you know each thing ought to really be judged on its merits sorry valves is good tubes is best i just realized what came out of my mouth yeah anyway. yeah well you know <laughs> in vino veritas dan <laughs> how about two yeah not too bad um so you know just 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 be try try to be a little more open-minded about it and see yeah. what we can discover yeah, yeah, yeah. so there, there were those things and as dan said um i personally have had two experiences with thomas blug in the last year or so which have really made me go oh hang on a minute one was in germany when we did the toman thing mm -hmm. and we plugged in his marshall um his original 70s modded marshall alongside the blue amp one and um i was struggling to pick one that i preferred yeah and secondly thomas came here at the last uh, at the end of last year and we just plugged a few things and had a listen and i think we're going to play you some of that now Thomas Blue, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> hey, mate. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, we we've been in discussion with Thomas for a long time about a great many things. So we hope to cover a few of those bases today. Not the least of which, you brought along your amazing little Amp One. Yeah. This is the Mercury edition. The new edition, which is the Mercury edition, mm. right? Uh, we briefly had a look years ago when it first came out. Well, you know, not long after that. So what you heard over the beginning there was really interesting and a great start point for our discussion. We're switching through the stuff on the board, which you can see. And this switch here changes from Thomas's Amp 1 Mercury edition to a matchless King Cobra. They're running the same speaker. So it's running, they're both running through the matchless's 1x12 cabinet. So all you're hearing is the amp one turned on, and then the matchless turned on. Being, same speaker. Being fed by the same mm. pedal board, same speaker. I was surprised, Dan. If maybe before we have any more reaction, we could listen to some more, shall we? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Thomas, so this is something that you do a lot uh, as, as part of education into the amp one world. Sure. I mean, you know, the biggest problem I have is it looks like a pedal, 
but it's a real amp. And how can I show that it's a real amp? Mm. I have to compare it to a real amp. Mm. And so this is what I learned from, you know, at the beginning I said, you know, this thing is great. And people go, oh, that's just a preamp. No, it's a real amp. See, yeah, this is a speaker right. <laughs> cable. Please believe me. It's not an amp. You know, so this is why, why I'm here. Let's yeah. play it some more. Yeah. Okay. And um, just so that it's really clear what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, and I think maybe we can come back after that, have some reaction and just talk a little bit more around mm -hmm. it. So uh, what you heard there was various um, combinations of the true Fi color driver and also the DNM drive. So there was a lot of high gain. Let's start. Dan, where do you want to start? I just want to start clean and mess around with the volume control on the telly. Okay, so you're, so in, you're in number one on the, on the 321 there. So yep. that should be okay, me. so there's nothing else on. This is the, uh, the app one. This is the matchless. So Dan's basically misunderstood the rules of the game from the from the off there, and uh, he's already worked out which is which. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I'm here switching. So, um... <laughs> right. Okay. I'm gonna see your clean sound <laughs> and raise you a DNM drive and okay. just have a quick listen mm -hmm. um, with the same the same business. Okay. Where am I? Number two. I am. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm just going to have another quick listen with the Analog Man Fuzz. Tom's has already got me out once with this. Um, we were in Germany, and we did it in a room with his Marshall. It's 1967 uh, Black Flag Plexi, which is my... Holy Grail amp. Yeah. A bit modded. Yeah, a bit modded. I have the cascading version, but I have uh, both channels. I, it's a PA that's been modded, so one channel is totally original, but I was having this um, cascading gain stages thing. Which yeah. which uh, we compared, and I was I was I came to the point where I had to choose, and I could discern a difference, but I got it wrong. Wow! <laughs> and I and I, I said the amp one was the Marshall, and the Marshall was the amp one. Um, and what was interesting in that exchange was the things that I were that I was noticing was a gain difference. Yeah. 
And I've noticed the gain difference here. Too. Ah, I should. Uh, maybe we could uh, spend. No, 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 with the I... next comparison, I try to be matched the gain even closer. Okay. Well, what what has really surprised me yeah. there is playing on the fuzz just for a second. Mm -hmm. One, as everyone will know, one thing that. So the fuzz is an analog man BC183 underneath. Mm. Okay. I'm looking for the fuzz. Which is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. All good, all good. So ah. tiny. Okay. The gold fuzz, yeah. So it's, you know, a fuzz face clone. Yeah. And one of the great things about the fuzz face is obviously when, you, clean when up, you roll like, the volume down, yeah. it sounds great. Yeah, and listening to that, I would say down at that level, the real super chiminess, whatever we said light on, sounds like the matchless. Right. And light off, to mm -hmm. me, sounds like... But I would have thought that difference would have been so colossal... Yes. ...that it would have been... You're, you think it is colossal? No, 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 no I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. Especially with a, a fuzz face, that's always been the tell for me you know, those sorts of simple transistor type units, you know, you yeah, plug sensitive. those into, normally you can get, you can get a, a transistor amplifier that sounds really good, but as soon as you plug one of those things in, they become buzzy and harsh and, and that's yeah. like, it's like, wow, mm -hmm. right, you know, it's so impressive. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so before we reveal which is which, Thomas, if it's cool, I'd like you to play for a second. Sure. Um, I'm going to hide Dan from which way around the switch is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, um, now hang on. Eyes are shut. I'm yeah, shut. Close your just, eyes. Yep. And Thomas, what, what kind of sound can I dial up for you here? What sort of thing would you would work for you? I hear something. Yeah, just before we go on, yeah. I think we need to up the volume or gain or one or the other of of that sound. Mm -hmm. um, just and to just to get it closer. I'm not going to look. I'm not going to look. So okay, you, I will do two you know things. What to do. Two you things. know what to do. La 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 Just so I can't hear which knobs he's tweaking. The matchless knobs have a very specific okay, sound to their taper. <laughs> okay, let's. <laughs> <laughs> actually did a lot. Did you? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so maybe maybe play a short phrase, I'll switch it. Yeah. And then uh, Dan, Explain will, what... Dan will know which is happening. Okay. So uh, if you just play a phrase and then pause, I'll switch it and then play it.
So that's the the last one. Yeah. Uh, is the matchless and the, the one before that was the yeah. That's what I, I'm tempted to say that purely yeah. because of the high end. Yeah. Yeah. A common misconception I think mm. that I certainly had um, with the Ant One is I didn't know. Just by looking at it, you think it's digital technology. Yeah. Yeah. It, but isn't. But it's not. Let, it's let's it. talk about that. Because can about we? That. Because that's, you know, can we, if we've got one that we can just lift up here. Absolutely. I, I'm right. going um, to turn the GoPro off on this okay. uh, thing back here because we're short of card space. So I have to remember to turn it back on again. Right. Okay. So, I mean, okay. When let me, you. Let me help. <laughs> <laughs> it weighs nothing. Right. And when I first picked that up, when I first picked that up, I thought, okay, it's a modeler of some description. But this is. Is he paying us for this? Is he paying us for this? Me? <laughs> Never. That's, that's all the questions that the YouTube land is asking at this moment. Yeah. But I find this really interesting because every anything that looks like this that's come out in the last, I don't know, how, however yeah. many years, has been digital technology. Right. Yeah. But this isn't. Yeah. Um, let's work backwards, Thomas. Right. Um, it's 100 watts. Yeah. It's actually 150 watt peaks. And uh, 100 watts. You know, if you take a, a tube amp that is rated 100 watts, you can get more out of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you know, I, I kind of try to to get the things going that are happening in a real tube amp. And so you need to have a bit more headroom. You ha you need to have that kind of punch and the sponginess and the sagging feeling and you know all the stuff that we love mm. about tube amps. And um, 100 watts to me is, um, this is... That's a happy place. Yeah. And this, this is, I mean, what I, I'm not into 200 watts, you know, the Marshall Major. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 100 watts is plenty. Mm, yeah. And um, so this was the benchmark for me and having the headroom um, is, is cool, it's simply cool. And it's a class D... Yeah. Power section, which is not. Uh, let's explain this. I, okay. I have in my life assumed that class D was digital. It's not. No. Um, you know, the the thing is, what is digital? Okay. Usually, people, when you when you convert an analog signal like a sine wave mm -hmm. and chop it in, p in pieces and then convert it and then you process it and you put it back, this is to me digital. Mm -hmm. So this is a different technology which is not causing any delays. It is just um chops yes but they are so high frequency that that it's like not audible anymore but it's not converted that's the big thing the right. signal is not converted and the result is you uh, you have no latency mm. and you have sheer efficiency if you have an all tube classic design you need to have the valves plus the out output transformer mm -hmm. And this was my problem because output transformer means at least two kilograms somehow, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, for a hundred watt amp. And this whole thing what is less than one and a half kilos. This is one point two kilograms. Far out. Okay, right. Two pounds, two and a bit pounds if you're in the US. Two pounds. It's kind of two pounds. Yeah. Two and yeah. And and the other side is um, the same thing on the power supply. I mean, this is the heavy stuff on a valve amp. And then, of course, if it's heavy, you need a heavy chassis that goes with it for the mechanics. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And so it all sums up. With this, I have a, um, a, a switch mode power supply. Mm -hmm. The big benefit of that is anywhere where there's a plug on this planet, uh, power outlet let in, in Japan, in the States, in Australia, in, in the UK, in Germany, it sounds exactly the same. Mm. So any voltage will do the same sound and even the, the, the frequency doesn't matter anymore. What's the difference between a vintage Marshall from the 60s and from the 70s? It's the capacitors. And I, I don't like the 70s because they're too stiff for me. Mm. There's too much power ready to be, ouch, it hurts me. But when I play a 100 watt Marshall from the 60s, I can handle it because right. it has a curve. You know, it's like... You, you you still have the attack because the capacitor is full, but then comes the note blooming because the voltage zags and drops, and then this is where the note starts to shine. And actually, by by lowering the voltage, all the tubes will be at a different point of the curve because their voltage drops too. Right, and that's a totally musical effect which is phenomenal. Eddie Van Halen, you know. 
all these sounds are based on these effects and yeah, right. and all the you know the cranked Fender amps and mm. blues amps and that's this is what, what where the metric comes from. So wow. a quick tangent on on digital for a second. Then. Yeah. So this is all analog, right? As we know. Be besides the reverb chip. And, and ah, okay. the, a, a little microcontroller that does, does uh, switching functions. Okay. But the signal path, yeah. so this what makes the sound is all analog, in to out. When you model components, because you, obviously you know about modeling. You, yeah, you were... I've done a modeling amp in 2000, 2000 maybe. Yeah. And the, the guitar player in the States gave it the, the award boss of modeling amps in those days. What was it called again? It was the Zentera. Zentera. That's yeah. Right. Using Kenner. Yeah, of course. Um, what's the difference in modeling a one of those components of the amplifier, like a capacitor network or a tone stack, compared to what you've done here? Because I'm fascinated by that. Because mm. the, the the logical thing says, well, if you take it and you mod model it digitally, it's just values, it's blah, blah, blah. But you're saying there's something that goes beyond that. Yeah, sure. I mean, first, the thing is there's nothing wrong about values and whatever. Yeah. But... Um, you have to understand first, if you want to do something on the digital domain, you have to convert the signal. Yeah. And that's one of the most delicate things f first, I believe. Mm -hmm. Conversion because from conversion. analog to digital and yeah. then back again. Ex ex so, so you need two times conversion. Mm -hmm. And there's a loss. I mean, things are getting better and better and better, but there still is a loss. Next thing is there is a latency, just be pure shear of that conversion. Yeah. Next thing, there is a latency b b uh, because of the pro processor. So things getting faster and faster. And I'm not telling that digital technology is evil or bad, but just by the means of that technology, it will not be able to be zero latency, period. Mm -hmm. And if you do care about your attack, so you you can feel it. Mm. The thing about the modeling amps is um, that you can emulate and they will sound very much alike. Yeah, so yeah. If, if you don't play them, uh, if uh, so this is why a lot of uh, studio guys play the camper because it makes the pro producer happy yeah. because they sound good yeah. and it's so convenient. Bing, bing, bing. Oh, there's my full rig and everything is there. So, you know, Christoph Kemper, genius, no problem. But different type of gig. But once you play in a band, with no in ear in the real world, you yeah. know, with speakers and a drummer, I believe an analog amp is king. Thomas, thank you so much for joining us. Well, yeah, mate, thank big you pleasure, so much. Big, big pleasure. As always, it's an education for all of us. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think we can safely say that uh, amp one Mercury will join. Yeah. TPS's stock amps. Yeah, definitely. Because I think it's a player. It it's is a player. player yeah, yeah. More player. than more than, and I think hopefully it will go some way to appeasing um, lots of people who get annoyed with us for not using more transistor <laughs> amplifiers. Yeah, it's got a valve in it. It's got a valve in it. Yeah, that helps. <laughs> no, it's very cool, mate. No, yeah. thank you so much. I really yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Okay, that was interesting. It was so long ago. I can't remember what was in the video, but anyway, that was interesting. Um, Great to see Thomas, great to see the Mercury edition, which is the updated um, Blug uh, Amp 1 product. Now, I've got a little personal hope in all of this, right? which is both Dan and I run two amp setups, set wet dry. I've got a little hope that my second amp might be able to be something smaller and more portable. Right. Sorry, I just wanted to get... Oh, yeah, okay. So, this is the... That's the original one. That's the original they look, one. They look more or less the same. Yep. Um, so the obvious advantages to this stuff, and like the quilter. So what's this, 100 watts? You know, and I could put that in my gig bag yep. with my guitar. That's a, an obvious, massive advantage yep. to this sort of thing. And the quilter, I mean, pff, man, that's even lighter. Crazy, isn't it? <sighs> crazy, crazy, crazy. So, you know, are they, do, could they be a practical way to run a two amp setup? And I'm, I'm going to try it. Yeah. Going to try it, definitely. Yeah. Um, and and we'll, we will get onto that in this video. Um, Dan, we've got the DB meter back. Very good. I've found a way to make it better. Have you? Yeah. In, um, on the count of three, I want you to turn and point this 
at the db meter and press that power button okay okay yep on on three okay okay one two no you need to turn around yeah hang on one two three <laughs> that makes it better oh oh we're just we are truly living in an enlightened age because i've heard this is just wonderful disco is the new thing is it yeah it totally is Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, we can't leave them all on the time because Simon will go nuts. But anyway, um, there you go. Disco is a new thing. For all the haters of the um, DB meter, that's for you. <laughs> Disco. Right, part one of this video is going to be... The big question that everyone's got about the next tone is, does it sound like a valve amp? Um, we'd sort of like that to be a moot point, wouldn't we? Yeah. But we're going to do it anyway. Sure. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know, the next tone, do, we'll do a sweep of the top panel, is a transistor amplifier mm -hmm. that uses a analog four separate output stages yep. to go for four different types of output valve character, correct? Yep. That's correct. And they are the, the a, B, class AB parent stages uh, done with solid state technology, it's not modeling. It's not modeling. They okay. go to a great length to, to say that the way they've done the different power stages is not modeling. It's done using solid state circuitry and, and they very, are, very they are there to emulate a 6V6, 6L6, EL84, and EL34 type power valve. All the major food groups. Yeah, 6V6 most commonly known in the uh, deluxe, deluxe reverb. Um, among many other 6L6 most commonly in well many amps but twin reverb mm -hmm. most Mesa boogies etc etc 2 rock etc etc um, EL84 most commonly associated with the Vox circuit but also 18 watt Marshalls etc etc matchless yeah. yeah and EL34 is obviously most commonly although not exclusively associated with Marshall amplifiers the 6v6 and 6l6 is commonly referred to as the American sound. Yep. And the um, ER34s, EL84s, commonly referred to as the British sound. I always found that really interesting. Yeah, because it's about much more than what your output value yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, my dear friend Martin Kidd, <laughs> when I asked him what the difference between an EL34 and a 6l6 was in Victory's amps that do that have them swappable, mm -hmm. he said virtually indistinguishable until you turn it up Wow! to almost patent pending. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's, of course it's a part of it, but it's not until they start overdriving Working. and doing their yeah, thing yeah, that yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the big differences come in. So just a point on that, really, if you're choosing your amp purely on the, on the output valve type, it's, it's a, it's a red herring in a lot of cases. Yeah, it's part of the design. Yeah. It's just, and there's lots that go into that design. Yeah. 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 Um, However, cool. however, when they're working in the way that we associate them working when they're in their kind of, you know, nice bit of operation, mm -hmm. that's when the generalizations start coming yeah. out. So an AC30 would not sound like an AC30 if it didn't have EL84s cathode biased doing its thing. Pumping. And this is why it's so cool that the uh, guys at Boss have done this because they recognize that a lot of that character that we associate with these, you know, the genres of, of amplifiers, valve amplifiers, happens when you have that particular power amp working the way it does. So they've gone to great lengths to say, okay, we've got big, powerful, solid state amplifier, but you can choose between yep. these sort of different output sections. I think that's amazing. And in addition to the four um, virtual valve types, You've also got four output levels, so from 0 0.5 watts up to whatever the next tone artist is, maybe 60 or 80 watts or something. Right. Um, there's two, there's, you've got the 40 watt and the 80 watt basic amplifiers. Yeah. But then as, as you're going through, you can change the, you know, within the amplifier itself. Yeah. Uh, it's got four, th no, I'll tell you. Okay. I'll, I'll just go and look, Dan. In fact, now would be a good time to, um, no, I can't, I turned it off. Uh, my, my telephone, um, we'll, we will do a shot of the top panel. Um, 0.5 watts, right? Half power and maximum power. Awesome. Okay. So there's three, or uh, off altogether. Okay. Which presumably means 
not going any further with that. Um, cool. So, let us begin. I'll be Chief Tweaker. Okay. To begin with, um, I really I am going to turn my phone on actually, so I can do this while I do it. Mick has a new phone that has a very very cool camera. I've gone Android. You have gone Android. Uh, partly, um, my wife was so angry at me moaning about my iPhone. She bought me this. Um, and more and more things need to be Android now, so I need to check that they work. Right. Which is part of the reason. But it has got the best best camera I've ever seen. It's crazy. On any phone ever. Yep. Um, I thought my iPhone ten was good. That's stray. ridiculous. What is it? It's a Hawaii! Hawaii! Yeah. Um, we've called it Ralph. <laughs> That's better. Because sounds like Huey. Right. Sounds like being sick. So it's called Ralph. <laughs> Anyway, um, what is it? It's a Mate 20 Pro. Cool. Maybe. Anyway, I'm now going to engage the video mode. Don't you know? Just going to check it's on 4K. No, oh, here we go. This is why I turned it off. Uh, right. God, why do we take so long to do everything, Dan? Here is the top panel of the next tone. Artist. Yes, it is recording. Happy days. So, as I said, there are the power amp options. And here is how our Vox AC15 is set. Groovy. Groovy. If, any, if anything massive changes, we will come back to that. Right, um, let's get a sound out of the AC15 that we like then, Dan. Okay, uh, AC15 I believe is there. Done. That'll do. That'll do. Uh, normal channel, red. <laughs> you saw what the settings were. Okay, I'm going to set the next tone um, to the EL84 power amp. Let's see what we can get. Okay. Um. spend hours doing that no. because we could literally go backwards and forwards all day just tweaking the EQ but what I did as I turned up the treble I turned down the bass mm -hmm. I went to the half power mode yep. in the power section I turned up the master volume I turned up the gain and the EL84 mm -hmm. it's clearly not the same mm -hmm. but certainly in terms of nice and wiry and the drive character yep how does it feel under the fingers? That feels good. It feels quick. Yeah. Um, the... What would you like? I could I can tweak further if you have any suggestions. Okay. There's funnily enough the AC15. It has that that thing that we associate with Vox amplifiers that we call chime. Yeah. And it's this specific frequency right up in the top end, but it doesn't. It's breaking up, but it doesn't sound harsh and fizzy. It's just before harsh and fizzy. I think it's a negative feedback thing. Yeah, right. Because it, it, if you if you if Dan just plays the AC15 in a sec, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the cut control, which is the master tone cut control, up and down on the AC15. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
in a large way that defines the Vox sound Absolutely. to me when yep. it's when it's cranking. Yep. The now that's not to say that if you uh, take out the negative feedback circuit in every amp that you'll get that, but as part of the Vox design, it's you know without that, yep. that's when it all sort of blooms and comes to life. You know, um, so I adore that sound. You know, AC fifteen sounded good today, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it sounds magic. I will, I will just say before we move on, you could be in a situation like this where you hear that sound next to a more fuller frequency, less wiry, bigger bass Fatter. kind of sound, yeah. and much prefer the bigger bass kind of sound because it just sounds more pleasing. It's more rounded. It's it sounds more finished in yeah. a way. But dare we say, you know. Classic guitar sounds in a band mix, in a live mix, which we will get to one day. Um, you need more of that, don't you? You need less bass. Oh and you yeah, need you more do. More presence and yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love that. But cool. the, the, the so the next tone uh, again. <laughs> Uh, pull the mids down just a hair. I'm going to put them all the way down. Let's see. Okay, with the mids all the way down, and then add a little bit of bottom end back in. It's a completely different frequency. It is. Yeah, yeah. Space, isn't it? Yeah. And, and okay, so we don't want to be critical of the next tone to say it doesn't sound exactly like the AC-15 because its job it's not modelling an AC-15 it's not modelling it's not trying to sound like an AC-15 it's just that character yeah so what I'll do now is before we try any pedals I'll just leave the settings of the amp exactly as it is mm -hmm. and go through the four powers power perfect stage types yep yep okay yep so that's a, that's EL84s yep yep <laughs> When you go through them like that, there was one particular that sounded big and open. And Have a guess which one that was. That's the 6L6s. Yeah. Yeah. And, and immediately I'm going, oh, yeah, that's that's the one I like. Yeah. You know, because um, it just sounds bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Very uh, cool. Okay. Let's uh, very quickly um, pick an overdrive pedal. Okay. Let's use the dude. Okay. Can we hear some strat as well, though? Yeah. At this point. Sure. Well, I tell you what, I'll play some humbuckers. Okay, just to uh, keep everybody happy. Right. So, next tone. Tremendous amount of gain in the dude. Yes. Wow. 
Wang La. Um, okay, uh, next tone with humbuckers. <laughs> Tell you what's interesting about that is that, that bottom end mm. is really it's massive in the bottom end, mm. huge and causing me an issue or two. Okay, just with the sure thub of it. Can we turn the bottom end down? Okay, let's try that. Good sound. You totally usable. Totally. Yeah, I've you know the, the, hand on heart. I'm enjoying the Vox a bit more. Yeah, just as throatier. Um, it seems to cave in less under the pedal. Mm. Now we could open the next tone up a bit more. Can we try that? Can go we go to, to a go, higher, to, go to forty? Go to the go to the highest yep. volume setting. Yep. Turn the master down a bit. Input gain down a bit. Um, by the way, I mean, we haven't even gone into the next tone's overdrive sounds. It's got some overdrive sounds of its own. Right. Maybe we can do that in a sec, but, um, okay, so this is... Thank you. 
turn, turn the delay on there to give me a bit of grease. Yeah, yeah. I like that. In some ways, I find it cleaner. Uh, the, the def, what we did in the next time is we went up to the full power mode and turned the channel volume down and the input gain down and the master volume up, giving it more headroom. Mm. Surprise, surprise, puts me in a much happier place. Sure. Um, and with the dude, it sounds clean. Great note definition. Yeah, yeah, articulate. And I guess what you lose is some of that chewy goodness of the Vox, which you either like or you like less. Sure. The There's an editor that you can get with that amplifier. So, and and again, go in there and it's just infinitely tweakable. Yeah, so you can presumably so, get in and do the EQ all that and stuff. all that. Yeah. 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 Cool. I mean, it's, you know... You don't have that's the 40 watt one against a uh, 1x12. Hang on, it's the artist, I believe. Okay, let's just double check this. So we have uh, ascertained that the artisan is indeed 80 watts, yes, and the stage is 40 watts, right? But there, there is that's loud, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you can me, easily, yeah. easily gig with that. Well, let's do that then. Um, the dB meter is on. <laughs> As you can see. Oh, you've done that already. Yeah, check oh, it out. Oh, okay. So the dB meter is on. Um, just to draw attention to the dB meter. Um, here you are, Dan. Have some schwang. Let's see what sort of volume. Yeah, we hit 105 on the dB meter. Okay. Plenty loud enough. Plenty, plenty, plenty loud enough. Okay. <laughs> That's brilliant. <gasps> yeah, so... Disco's a new thing, man. Okay. Um, for whatever that was worth, an interesting comparison, mm. and I think stands up. Yep. I don't know. We could get in there and edit more. We could tweak. We could change the EQ. We could experiment with the gains. We could do all of that. Mm -hmm. Let's do that very quickly with a Hot Rod Deluxe. Okay. Because I think the um, the bass end response is going to be radically different. Sure. And the, clen the clean, nice, cleany stuff. With the 6L6s. With the 6L6s. Yep. Okay, let's do that. Maybe try a bit of Strat. So we'll see you in a second. And we're back in the room. And we're back. Okay, we swapped out the AC15 for a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, which is a 40-watt 6L6 amp. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to do with this is set it up so it's got kind of a nice strat clean sound. Sure. Lovely. Yeah. And yep, then we'll use that. a tube screamer. Yeah. We'll do that thing. Um, because it's kind of familiar to me anyway. Do you know what speaker's in the in the boss? Um, it's a speaker that they... They developed? It's a 100 watt 12 inch speaker. Right. Wow. I think it's got a medium magnet. Let me check. How would you know by looking at it? Just the size of it? What? The magnet? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like a 35 ounce um, medium magnet ceramic right. speaker. It says it says G12 100. Okay. So I'm guessing that's 12 inch 100. Don't know how efficient it is. Mm. Um, the Hot Rod Deluxe by contrast has... A medium magnet 12 inch speaker and... Just for fun, the AC15 also has a medium magnet 12 inch speaker. Is there our Nico there? In the, in no, the... it's Greenback in that one. Greenback, oh right. Okay. Greenback in that one, and this has the stock Hot Rod Deluxe speaker. So okay. they're all medium magnet ceramic speakers. So they may be quite different in efficiency and all of that, but mm -hmm. that's what they are. Right, cool. Okay. Daniel, if you wouldn't mind. Can I have a bit more reverb? Great, tiny bit more volume. Sure. 
just so, try right. the bright switch on and off, can you? Okay, yeah. I would say let's leave it on, but yeah. turn the treble down a bit, tiny okay. bit. Sounds ace! Can you give me a sweep of the mid pot, please? Yep. I could make a quite a strong case for both of those, either mid scoopy or mid pushed. Yeah, yeah. The I love where those the, the mid frequency is positioned because in lots of amplifiers, like with the um, with the Sovtech, if I turn down the mids, there's no volume. But, yeah, it's like yeah. it's everything. Goes. But that's just like it's either scoopy yeah. or mid push, but it doesn't change the actual overall volume of everything. Um, it's really nice. Set it at my favourite position for pots, can you? Yep. Two o'clock. <laughs> Quarter to seven. Oh, no, <laughs> it's done at two. Uh, yeah, two o'clock. Yeah, this where pot Do you want should... everything at two? No, just no, the no, mids? no, no, that'll be right. right. And then, um, obviously, we're in the clean channel, we've got some reverb. And then, uh, is there a presence knob on that? There oh. is. Let's just hear presence, okay. Um, it was it was very presency up up high, so n definitely not up high. No. Um, Got it at your two o'clock again. It's actually one o'clock. How's that? Lunchtime. Lunchtime. Lunchtime is fine with me. There we go. Um, okay, cool. That'll do. That's quite a nice Sounds fendery, ace. fendery clean sound. Yep. yep. Um, would you mind, Daniel? Showing us what we've got on the Hot Rod Deluxe there. Okay. Uh, I think it's rolling. It's rolling. So this is how the Hot Rod Deluxe is set. All right, there we go. Sweeping. Perfect. That's swanky. Yeah, is that, I do feel a bit weird with Android, but there you go. My love for Apple is diminishing daily. Um, so what we need to do now is see if the uh, next tone will get anywhere near it. Yes, we do. Sorry, I'm preempting. All in good time. Okay, next tone. Okay, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on the position four and do that. Do that stratty thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this thing. I'm not gonna do that. Um, right. Okay. So balanced. It's just what a great sounding app. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. So give us some 6L6s then. All right. Highest power mode, I would say. Yep. And I'm actually going to turn the master up. Yeah, bit of volume. Yep. Thank you. 
might want to touch less mid, I think. Okay. From from memory. <laughs> is a bit louder, I yeah, think. Yeah, Maybe a tiny bit more front end on the boss, just a tiny bit, and yeah. a bit more reverb. Tiny bit more volume again, sorry. Yep. Uh, you know, master volume. Yep. It's near enough. That's pretty good. It's near enough. That's pretty good. Have a listen out here, see what you think. That's very good. Tiny bit more hi-fi sounding, I would yeah, say. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely a strength, low mid area. That the um... which may well come out at this point. So let's do the uh, standard tube screamer thing. Plenty of level, not much drive. Certainly, one of the things I've been very quick to criticise a lot of transistor amps for in the past is that their reaction to overdrive pedals is really different from sure. what you'd expect from a valve amp. And I say different, I don't say worse, I say different because mm -hmm. it's what you're used to. So the final test for that will be this.
There was actually some moments there that I preferred. There were a good few. <laughs> there were a good that few. That was really interesting because I the. it seems to me that, I mean, when we were doing it with the EL84s, it was a good sound. Yeah. That is great. That was totally, as far as what the uh, Deluxe is doing, that it's not the same as the deluxe. No, there's a di there's definitely a difference in the top ends. Actually, all through the, the all frequencies. through. So that so theoretically, at least, you could get into the editor in the next tone and tweak some of those frequencies sure. about to see if that put it closer. If indeed you wanted it yeah, yeah. closer, but there was quite a lot about the the next tone that I really liked and actually preferred in some cases. Yeah, some of that might have been it might have been fakeying me into oh this bigger bottom end there's. It's it's less it's scoopier in the mid, therefore it feels a little easier yeah, right. with the fingers. It's yeah. not as revealing for sure. Yep. I felt the um, the frequency modulation of the trem was coming out more mm -hmm. through the fender. Yeah, and and might be the bright switch doing that. Yeah, it might be just allowing more bright through. Yeah, the uh, the the fender's compressing differently as well. Um, and again, it's like we're doing with the the AC30, just in that in that very top end where it compresses. That's not a, a good or a bad thing. I think that it's just different. It's just different, yeah. and I just hearing that, and always in in my mind, I'm always listening to these things with the idea of having them in context in a band. That thing in a band set like that, like the big open, because that's master pretty much all the way up. Is it okay? Yeah. Actually, let's just. I will just do that for you, just for reference on the sounds you just heard. Um, here are the settings. Uh, it's got my friend, Rachel Fecognition. Uh, here you go. This is how the next tone was set for that last uh, bit of messing about. There you go. Master and Presence on 10 there. 6L6, max. There. And likewise, the Hot Rod Deluxe was thusly to quote. Actually, who says thusly? Um, Bergs? Uh, possibly. I think Berg says it. I think um, Greg Cock might say it as well. I've, I've never actually met Bergs. I've only ever conversed with him online. That doesn't deserve a hock, does it? Yeah, we should honk him. Oh, no, no, we can't honk him. We can't Berg. honk him because we've never actually met him. Yeah, never met Berg, so we can't honk Berg, but we can honk Greg Cock. We can honk Greg Cock. Did you... The mighty Sasquatch of Tone! Did you feel the spirit with which I honked, Dan? Uh, I'm just going to check that actually did record because, you know, unlike with devices. I want to hear that with this. Groovy. The P90s. Do you want the same kind of sound or a different uh, yeah, sound? Yeah, no, same. Let's, let's keep it as it, as it is. Yep. Um... Thank 
Play that chord again. So and this, the, the Hot Rod Deluxe has got a really interesting honky mid range, right. which is it's well known for and is one of the reasons it's so well loved in bands because right. it, it really does project well. Mm -hmm. But with the TS, I was I was on the edge. I mean, we were touching 103, 100 and whatever there, so we allowed. Sure. Which gives rise to the other um, <laughs> observation that's very often made about TPS, which I'll come to in a minute. Um, and actually, it's a nicer sound with the slightly mid with the mid back a bit yeah isn't it yeah and, and yes of course we could get in and we could tweak those eqs but in terms of what are your impressions in terms of feel under the fingers playability i have there's no concept of playing that thinking this is a lesser amp no you know what i mean I it's would agree. it's it's all there yeah. that's i am so impressed with that um like the the higher headroom, the EL34 thing, because I, I've lived in that area for so long. 84. And it's, sorry, the EL84 thing, because I've lived in that area for so long. It's such a, um, the design of those amplifiers, it is so unique. So, of course, if it doesn't sound exactly like uh, Celestial Now Nico Blues, yeah. um, you know, negative, feed, no, ne negative feedback, all that stuff, then you're going to be going, yeah, but it's not a Vox. However... Uh, for that, the six L sixes, that is, yeah. I would absolutely use that just for that sound alone. Yeah, no, no question. Yeah, it is awesome. on maximum volume, pretty much. It like, is. It, won't, it you is. Get any more than that out of it. Yeah, and we're only on two and a half on the yeah. Hot Rod Deluxe. So, so there, there is a consideration. So yeah. the Hot Rod Deluxe will go much louder, considerably yep. louder. And Hot Rod Deluxe is how many watts? Forty. Right, and that's meant to be eighty. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Um, I mean, I wouldn't certainly using a two amp rig. My that's fine. Other amp wouldn't be as loud as that no, probably. No, no. Um, cool. Uh, I think that concludes. We were going to do this all in one hit, but we've kind of gone on a bit, so we're going to split it into two parts to to make sure that the quilter part of it gets um, a bit more attention. Yeah, um, we can't rush that. Yeah, we we mustn't rush that. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this one to a close. Just for the record. When we were pushing this up and down, the um, Dunlop Mini Volume X, it's controlling the delay level on the Belly Pop Deluxe, just in case that was confusing um, for either Simon while he's editing or you guys watching. Um, cool. Perfect. Go and watch part two when it's up, which will be soon-ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're going to do it right now. <laughs> Brilliant, guys. Thank you so much for watching. A massive thank you to our preferred retailers uh, in the UK and Europe is... Anderson's Music of Guildford, Surrey. In Australia. Paddle Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. And on the US of A, to which we're going to on Wednesday. Yeah, we've decided to go to now after all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> River City, City Guitar. Guitar, various loci. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon, guys. We appreciate your support thank so you much. Kindly. And also to everyone that's gone to that pedalshowstore.com and purchased yourself a lovely garment um, or DM drive or uh, hats and cups and scarves and socks. And, and in a few weeks, there'll be strings. Yes, yes. Okay, right, part two. Part two. Cheers, guys. See Have a great week. Bye.